Hello, in this video we're going to talk about hydroboration oxidation as a means of hydration of alkynes. In a previous video I sh shared with you that alkynes can undergo hydration reactions uh, in terms of various conditions. Uh, alkynes can undergo hydration by hydroboration oxidation, uh, also by oxymercuriation. In the oxymercuriation video I shared with you uh, how the oxymercuriation reaction is a little bit different than the uh, alkene version. It, it turns out that the uh, hydroboration oxidation reaction of alkenes is actually, or of alkynes is actually really similar to the hydroboration oxidation uh, of alkenes. Uh, the reagent is the same with, with a certain exception that we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, and like with alkenes, uh, the reaction also needs uh, the oxidation as a second step. So if you just learned about oxymercuriation of alkynes, you learned that the oxymercuriation doesn't need the, the demercuriation step with the reducing agent. Hydroboration still needs uh, oxidation with a, uh, with, with the, the second oxidation step. And to compare this to the alkene version, uh, as I've compared all of these to the alkene version, honestly, it's the same kind of reagents, same kinds of conditions, but instead of getting a, a ketone product, as you remember with the alkenes, you get a, an alcohol product. So let's take a look at the mechanism of hydroboration oxidation. Uh, it turns out this reaction has a lot in common with its alkene version. We start with uh, hydrogen boron. We end up getting, just like with the alkene version, we're going to have a, a concerted addition. Oh, I want curved arrows. There we go. Concerted addition of hydrogen and boron to the uh, alkene, or sorry, the alkyne, uh, and because that addition is concerted, uh, certainly we can think about the hydrogen and boron ending up uh, attached to the same face, so they are cis to each other. This is the hydroboration step, uh, and then the, the next part of the reaction we get uh, the oxidation step, sodium hydroxide and uh, hydrogen peroxide react to form the conjugate base of hydrogen peroxide, which can attack the, the boron compound. And I'm actually gonna go out here and I'm gonna swap out Br2 because uh, as you might remember from the alkene version, there are additional hydrogens on the borine, so it can end up doing additional uh, reactions. Hydrogen or or two. And I've got this, uh, let's see, we've got this O, O go, thing going on here. Uh, and the borane has a negative charge. No, it doesn't have an extra bond. It has, it's an anion. And then if you remember, again, uh, the sort of way that, that the in the alkene version, this boring falls apart is through uh, a rearrangement of sorts. And so what, what is uh, thought to happen is the carbon boron bond actually hops over to the oxygen and the, the weak peroxide bond breaks And 
then you get instead of instead of a borane, you get a boronate ester, hydroxide anions out. And of course, this transformation can happen again. Um, and you can swap off the other two R groups on the boron. And, and then this thing undergoes hydrolysis in the presence of water. And we've got boron in aqueous solution. No need even necessarily to neutralize it. Uh, turns out boron is particularly excited to have boron oxygen bonds. fairly happy here. Now we have our enol tautomer, and again, uh, as with all hydrations of alkynes, the enol tautomer is in equilibrium with the ketone. That's the mechanism of this reaction uh, for alkynes, the hydroboration oxidation of alkynes. It's actually similar to, to what alkenes do, except you know we have an alkyne. There, there's one little trick, uh, though, to the alkyne version, and that is because borane is really small and alkynes are, are really linear. So let's just go grab my generic alkyne. Because borane is really small and alkynes are really linear, uh, alkynes can react with borane more than once. And that's not necessarily what we want. Uh, it also is going to have, it also, the, the smallness of our, of our boronane is going to have trouble later on when it comes to talking about regioselectivity. Uh, we'll get to that here in a moment. But basically, uh, it's possible for boronane to end up on here twice. Uh, and this is not necessarily what we want. Who knows what this leads to? Uh, so if we replace, let's see, this gets, uh, end up with multiple additions. We don't want multiple additions. If we replace uh, the hydrogens, on our boring reagent with R groups, especially if those R groups are big bulky things, we can get uh, we can get this shenanigans to, to stop after one addition. Uh, the bulky R groups prevent further addition. And on the bottom of the slide here, I have two structures of some of commonly used bulky boranes. Um, one of them, uh, the first one, 9-borobicyclononane, is, oops, is given an abbreviation. Oops, I typed in my initials instead of the, uh, uh, the abbreviation of the compound here. 9-borobicyclo-331-nonane, uh, it's abbreviated 9-BBN, uh, happily so. Uh, number one, I don't want to write out 9 borobicyclo 331 nonane all the time. I don't want to say it. Uh, and certainly, uh, even established chemists are just as nervous about accurate, accurately representing complex polycyclic structures as uh, students just learning. So let's have this abbreviation and use it. Uh, the other compound below uh, is disecondary isoamyl borane. It, it has a di... It has a slightly abbreviated uh, name, disiamyl borane, uh, and you might actually see it as you might actually see the the si the the SIA secondary isoamyl uh, in parentheses, like it's some kind of. of like uh, some kind of substituent. The disic, uh, the dis second, or the disiamyl borane has has a chirality center in it, 
or two and can be prepared uh, you know, uh, enantio selectively so you can get some enantio selective things going on. Uh, not actually important for alkyne hydration, but it has other uses. Uh, and then I just realized that uh, I was hiding the name of, of diacyamyl uh, borane behind my uh, picture of me talking. So I've drugged them over here so you can see them uh, and their abbreviations. In the next video, we're going to talk about regioselectivity of alkyne hydration. And then we're going to wrap up this series with one more video uh, going into depth on ketoenol tautomerization. Thank you for watching.